got pushed on a truck, I guess. And then um, he said the same thing about this one. The only thing he gave me was like, make it as close to a police, like make it look the most police bikey that you can make it look. Right. So we just went off with it. Yeah, <laughs> which you pretty much nailed. And um, I mean, the AstroTurf <laughs> fucking floorboards are the best, dude. There's little chickens glued on it. Yeah. Like, go for the ride with them. Oh, dude, and that was the other thing, too, that also spoiled Rick, which, like, I think also, uh, I look at it as, like, a marker in his motorcycle journey also. When you put the fucking funky tour pack on the Sportster, yeah. like, everything he's done so far has been off the rails. <laughs> like, that just, like, set it off for him, man, you know? Dude, I loved it so much because he just, the sportster, he was just, he's like, I don't even want to see it. I want you to just do whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. He's like, just know I have to write it back. So I like, I went through and it's crazy because he ate a regulator or a charging system in it as well. But I had just redone that. I did like tires. I checked the neck bearings. I did make sure everything to make sure his trip was smooth. And I was like, what are we going to do? That's weird. So I bought that tour pack for like five bucks. Oh wow. Built this wild mount that would hold both gas cans off the, the side underneath it. And it had like a rack on top so he could put like this like extra luggage on it. Yeah. And, yeah, that's uh, where he puts his nutsack. Yeah, basically. His fucking, you ever see that <laughs> yeah, thing? Yeah, the, yeah. The, the big old orange one he hauls around. <laughs> yeah. yeah, his orange nutsack. Yeah. <laughs> he uh and then I pushed it all the way forward so he could just like have I mean he's a tall dude too, yeah. so I was like trying to gauge it like I think he'd fit on this, you know, because I made it not movable. I wanted it to be as stout as it could for the whole trip home. And yeah, like it did really good. And he went, like, I know he said, he always says how long it took him to get back there. But I'm like, dude, for a guy who's never ridden across country, like you just railed it. Yeah. And went for it. Yeah. He's, oh, he's taken to all of this, like a, like a real natural. Yeah. You yeah. Know? He's a fun dude to have around too. Like <laughs> yeah. Mexico was so much fun with him. <laughs> Like the sober guy is like the fun dude to be around for sure, but we're all getting sent to the moon. Dude, he don't you wish you were ride. around for Rick's drinking days? Dude, he was, he finally started telling me. <laughs> Has he told me, you some stories? Yeah, and I was like, we were all sitting there like, what? So we call it Party Rick when he starts <laughs> telling us the stories. <laughs> <laughs> Party Rick. Dude, and he, it was sound crazy. <laughs> dude, he was a wild cat, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so he never really opened up about it before, so I was just like, we never asked because it was we didn't know if it was like touchy or whatnot. And then yeah, this time he was like, you guys are not gonna believe this story. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> I partied all this time and I go pick up this fire truck. I'm like, you a fire truck? He's like, yeah, yeah. We roll it straight to the bar and just light the sirens off, and everyone comes running out, and they're like, oh, it's just Rick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, did he ever tell you the story about how he drove that thing across a median on a highway and shit? Like, no. he he just he's so many wild stories, dude. Dude, I mean, he's still a, the crazy thing is as a sober dude, he is like down to be a part of the wild things with us. Yeah, and yeah. I'm like, all right, man, like let's go if you want to do it, let's do it all. Yeah, yeah, he's he's adapted to all this just perfectly. He was born for this shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. do, do, did you guys talk like is there a third chicken rick bike possibly in the future if we just let it roll like he'll hit me up like if, wanted, <laughs> if, if i'm doing me and bradley my other friend if we're doing something stupid rick likes to be a part of it so, like <laughs> it depends on what trips we have you know he's gonna romp it's this one's gonna be kind of like the sportster so we're gonna do sturgis he's gonna ride the cop bike and then we're just gonna split ways there he's gonna ride all the way home and I'm just gonna take off down, and I'm sure he'll do something. He'll ride it around and do something while I'll do it, and then raffle it or sell it off to someone like he does. And then he'll need another bike eventually for something out here, which I have enough bikes to put him on. But he told me he's like, I can't ride one of your motorcycles and not take it back. Like yeah. I can't not buy it. And I was like, all right. So he was supposed to ride the long bike while he was out here. We just ran out of time. Mm -hmm. So. I was like, it's just, he's never, he's, he, I guess he did Timmy's foot clutch bike and everything, but, uh, yeah, he, I wanted, there's this long street by the house, and I was like, there's enough time for you to figure out what's going on before the end of the street, because <laughs> it takes a lot for people to get used to the amount of flop it has, like, the hydraulic foot clutch is, like, super smooth, but so it takes time throughout the throw to, like, engage it, but, yeah, it's a fun bike.
told him he could buy that one and ride it to EDR. <laughs> yeah, that'd be rad. That is an EDR bike. Yeah, I took it down there. It got best. It it got their like best metric last time I was out there. Oh, cool. Yeah. Do you think that's one that'll ever be for sale? It's like up now ish. Like everything's for sale. No one wants me to sell it though. That's the difference. Like my right. wife doesn't want me to. Rick's like, I really don't want to repost this because I don't want you to sell it. He's like, this bike is like you and you know, Skidmar's got his like uh, his forest bike, Sportster. He's like, those are bikes that are you guys. Like you can't, no one else can have those bikes. So I will only ever get rid of it if like someone hits me with the cash number that I feel good and I haven't gotten any of those. Like everyone thinks it's like a CB, like a regular CB chopper. Yeah. I'm like, dude, this thing will cruise like that's an eleven hundred. Ba- it's this, an eleven hundred bandit, right? This one's only the six hundred. Oh, okay. But it's still geared enough to like sit at like a hundred, like on the ten, like all day, which is I like, crossed to California and back, or when I rode it to Colorado, just like, wee. But it'll go and it still sips like that speed. It still gets like a hundred and ten, hundred and twenty out of the tank. Like wow, miles, you know. So like it is built really well. Wow. So. But it probably will definitely just end up living here forever, wherever I end up, because huh. I just can't get rid of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's funny, man, how, like, certain things will grow on you. But I, I feel the same way, though, like like you had said. For the most part, to me, like, for, the, like, a bike that's not special, like, who gives a fuck? Yeah. Let, them, let them come and go and, yeah. like, just keep having fun with them. You like, know? I mowed through so many different motorcycles. This has, like, been one of the constants. I had a really cool KZ750 Twin uh-huh. hardtail. And I only made that engine for, like, a few years. And it took a lot for me to get rid of it. But, like, I let one of my friends borrow it, and he broke it. And I never got around to fixing it. So I sold it to that same friend, and then he blew it up. And then, like, he sold it to this really young kid who has it now. And uh, the kid just, like, romps on it everywhere. And it's, like, cool seeing, like, this 20-year-old kid, like, enjoy the shit out of this chopper that i had for eight years right and that was like i never thought i'd sell it and that was a bike where i was like cool uh i don't need it at all because i got this cool thing uh i had like a stock bike that i dailyed at the time but now i have this thing that i daily so so compare this to uh when this fxr was stock like in terms of riding a long bike, like a, a chopped FXR versus a stock FXR, Dude, I feel like like, like tell people know, like what the what's the feel like the difference in feel. I it just uh, it's hard to say, but it's like all right, it I'll just say it. feels cooler. Like I feel like, uh, cool as fuck <laughs> on this bike, you know, like because like don't, my other don't bike, you feel like the the chopper FXR the, like a chopped FXR? It feels like you're really sitting in it yeah. and, and a part of that bike yeah like the i mean it's hard too because the other bike had such a big fairing so it kind of get pushed around like this thing doesn't move like we just rode through all that wind coming back and this thing was like on a rail and it just feels like a tank like going through the and yeah you the you sit like a chair it was like weird for me to get used to that for a while because i'm used to either having like my chopper feet way high up you know but this one, like, it's a very, I wanted it to be super comfortable. Yeah. And that's why I can feel like it just is a stout motorcycle. Yeah. It is a badass machine. And I didn't spend too much time when the bike was, like, on it, but when it was, like, a regular-ish FXR. Oh, okay. It wasn't your daily at that time? I dailyed it for, I probably put only, like, three or 4,000 miles on it before I was, like, cutting this thing up right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even thinking twice about this. <laughs> Do you have a bike like uh, that inspired you to chop an FXR? Is there like... Uh, actually, yeah, it was a um, JC Cycles bike. I saw it in Durango. Do you know who that is? Um, no, but there's only one name. real like chopper shop there there in town. Is it like um, no, that he I was, know of? No, right? he, he's out of Sacramento. He came up for like the 4CMC party. Oh, okay. And he has this... It's the... You know it. It's got, uh, it's got um, all the... Um, different colored fairings and everything on it okay you know which one is the oh you're talking about josh Berkey. yeah 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 that's yeah, yeah. That bike. oh yeah that's right J- yeah that is the company name what's up dude yeah <laughs> yeah uh, that bike was the one that i i was initially made me look for an fxr oh okay so yeah i bet you that one inspired a lot of people bit. um 
It's so funny. We were just talking about that in the last podcast I just did uh, here in Phoenix. We were just talking about that guy. He, this, the other guy was, is good friends with him. And, uh, yeah, we were talking about that bike. It's a fucking rad bike, man. Yeah, that it was that Now one. I get it why you went with this, this fairing and everything. Yeah, because like, he had, like, such a cool, wild setup. And, um, like, I knew I didn't want to go that crazy. And I knew I was just going to beat the tar out of this bike, too. So I was like, I'm going to try and make it simple. I did, like, love his open belt drive. So I did that. And there's another Dyna, not an FXR, but, like, a Long John's bike that I think is a... I forget who built that one. Chris Klein. Yeah. That's another one I saw, and I was like, that's sick. Yeah. Swing arm bike, dude. Bike is one. dope as hell, yeah. dude. Yeah. Yeah. We do a lot of riding with them, or we, we meet them at a lot of places, you know? And yeah. I see that bike, and I'm like... That bike's sick. Yeah, that bike is <laughs> tough, dude. So that's when I got into that one. But it was JC Cycles. I, I wanted to do an FXR particularly, and that thing was sick. Cool. Yeah, it is, man. Do you see any more FXRs in your future? Are you fully FXR'd know. out? I really don't know because, like, I'm not, I'm not motorcycle-specific to, like, any cool brand. Like, dude, I love early dinos i think are so sick like mm-hmm. drake's early dino over there mm-hmm. uh like the i feel like the older they get the more massive they look and i'm not too into that so like i'm not particular into it but if i found another fxr that was like a solid price i'd rock that i'd rock another one what about um like any other i would you do like another jap bike i yeah, I'm actually getting ready to build another one, but I have a couple of plans for like a, I'm building a Jigsaw 750 Santee CB650 frame, like a cool power bike we're gonna do with that one. Uh, but I wanna build a KZ, I have a KZ1000P in the backyard, but I'm gonna put all my Bandit 1200 engine and suspension and wheels so it's like, uh, like a Japanese performance packer, which is what we're going for. Like we're trying to like get some real horsepower out of that engine, because these things are just so temperamental. Like yeah, the one thousands you can put a lot of money into them and still not have that much work. We're like these things you could do anything to, and they never have issues. Yeah, but I'm just like kind of into motorcycles that I like to build. I guess nothing. I always say I'm gonna get a stock bike and like keep it stock and then i always end up just messing them up <laughs> yeah and other lies you tell yourself yeah yeah i'm like man like when i see you roll up i'm like that's a sick bike dude it looks like it's, it's just like looks comfortable like it's never gonna break down and i'm like i don't think i could do it yeah. <laughs> i hate myself too much <laughs> no dude i always have to have one new bike in my um in my lineup mm-hmm. um, because I just, dude, I ride way too fucking much yeah. to just keep up on all the other stuff. Yeah, yeah. I just, I have to. And then like, especially with this podcast, like there's places I have to be sometimes. I can't just cancel like, oh, I'm not going to Chop Town or whatever. Yeah. Like, oh, my bike's down. I can't make it this weekend. Like for me, it's not really an option. It wasn't even an option before this podcast, to be <laughs> honest with you. Like I've been doing this for long enough where like, words that have never left my mouth are my bike is broken i can't make it somewhere yeah. like I, i've borrowed a lot of friends bikes over the years um i've just taken different bikes over the years like i just have too many backup bikes but dude there's times where like all of the other bikes are broken except for the new yeah, one yeah yeah so i'm like oh looks like i'm taking the new one you know so that's why i try not to ever use my wife's sportster but that's your new backup bike. And that's bike. my new backup. Yeah. That's been my backup bike. And like one, like I still hadn't finished this. I messed the charging system up in that. And this was down. And I'm like, well, I don't really have a way to get to work because I didn't have a car yet because I didn't buy the El Camino. And she's like, well, how are you going to get there? I'm like, I'm going to borrow your bike. <laughs> it always works. And it's always set. Like it's, I always make sure that's like the bike that's like, everything nothing's half-assed on it because i don't want her to get hurt because of something i did right we're like my bikes i'm like i'll fix it later it would be totally fine <laughs> right and then they're sitting all broken down in the garage <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i like your bike it's like it's not a big deal to have to like pull over on the side of the road and tighten an exhaust flange yeah. or like whatever you know can't really have that with her no she's, you know? it's just got to be, like, be tight and right 
she's called me before and be like when she's riding back from California she's like my body's making a weird noise I'm like I don't even want to ask you to describe the noise but like <laughs> does it sound detrimental to its existence she's like oh it's it's more of a light click I'm like okay just make sure there's oil in it just keep riding back <laughs> 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 that thing just never fails, though, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's an Evo Sporty. Yeah. They're the best, dude. Like, I was just telling you, I don't know if I said it on the podcast or before the podcast, I want to start leaving bikes, like, around the oh, country. Yeah, yeah, but I think the bikes I'm going to leave around the country are sports. Yeah. Evo Sportsters are fucking perfect, dude. That's what Nomad, Charlie Nomad said that once. He's like, every garage needs an Evo Sportster. Yeah. It. And he's not wrong, but I used to have two of them in here, and I only need one, so yeah. I sold that one to Rick. Dude, for also uh, in terms of Evo Sportsters, his Evo Sportster Chopper. Yeah, the Gold Wheel. Probably one. my favorite Sportster yeah. Chopper ever. It is. Like sick. I'd probably fairly copycat that bike. <laughs> like it's that's a fucking dope bike, dude. It, the first time I saw it, I was like super into it, and then I've been to his house a bunch, and I'm like, that is, it just sits so tight and perfect. Right. You know, the dimensions are like totally correct on it. It's like all satin black, it's like it's Krylon so black, and then he's got gold wheels on it. And I know you, everybody knows he just mobs that thing hard and yeah. around, dude. <laughs> yeah, it, it's that is just a bike that can do everything. Like, like he still has enough room to load up the sissy bar, mm -hmm. but it's like a short little tight seat. Like, it's just it's fucking perfect, man. Like, honestly, like I wouldn't even be shy to like if he was selling that bike, Charlie. If you're selling that bike, man. <laughs> give me first fuck give me first crack at it and we could even talk like it don't even have to leave your house dude that'll be my western bike and that's like, very no like charlie nomad style like i know that dude's got motorcycles like all out the throughout the country <laughs> yeah yeah like that yeah that'd be perfect dude dude just sell me that like sell me a share in that bike you can keep it and use it and then when i'm out west that's my western bike <laughs> let's see what happens there <laughs> <laughs> yeah man yeah I don't know man what do you say we wrap it up let's wrap um, it up um yeah perfect dude sweet dude um I feel like there was one other thing I wanted to ask but that don't matter whatever I forgot it <laughs> for sure uh, yeah well um tell people where to reach you uh my Instagram handle is not DJ Snyder but the one everyone should check out is POS Moto and that's just something that two of us push and rick definitely helps push a lot and it's just like trying to keep a real tight group of motorcycle racers but people generally who just really like bikes so we do a lot of motorcycle riding we had 14 people with pos moto in mexico this year cool nine of them were on motorcycles so sick really cool. um that was my question because i meant to bring up the whole pos moto thing what does pos moto stand for um, it's definitely a piece of shit motorcycle, strictly for the fact that we are notorious, like Biltwell knows that we're notorious for blowing up our vintage Husqvarna motorcycles. Okay. So it started as a, as a racing group for just shitty motorcycles and it's like slowly expanding into like just cool people who are into motorcycles. It doesn't have to be like just choppers. It could be like a stock triumph that as long as like you're cool and like to hang out with us and do like the same thing we do. Okay. Like, generally you get like a pos sticker and like our shirts are always for sale and like we push that money into like racing again next year like built well 100 or uh fixing our blown up dirt bikes right so how many how many um desert races have you done so far we spent a whole year racing them but we also spent a whole year blowing them up <laughs> <laughs> uh but successful races i think we're at like i've done three built wells i did two i finished two of them pretty well um i blew up the middle one the second one we did the mint 400 we got pretty far into that and blew them up uh we did a bunch of like we followed a club in arizona that only does desert racing we did that for a year we did pretty good uh generally when i'm just not on my vintage bike i don't blow it up yeah like dude the mint 400 is one of those like benchmark like dream races for sure, yeah. How rad was it being at the Mint? The Mint was sick because we know the Biltwell dudes, so like they were out there, and it was like contingency was sick. And I don't know if you know what contingency is. It's like 
where everyone sets up all these booths, like all the vendors set up and like they just drive the race cars through it to go to tech. So like we were on our dirt bikes, just riding our dirt bikes through this, like seeing all of our friends. That was like the day one. And we started to drive way out to Prim and just like waiting with like 400 motorcycles for this race to start sending everybody off. It was like super sick. I was super bummed it blew up, but like my helmet went out of tech that year. It was the last year it was good for it. And I was like, I do not have the money to buy another good helmet <laughs> right now. But my friend who helps run POS, he went back out and took first in his class and in his vintage class. The next, it was like COVID really messed it up. So they had to do this race like three months apart. Okay. So it was like really quick back to back. And yeah, he went back out there, did it all differently. Like hit tech, left to prim loaded up in the morning, hit the race, finished really well, got his plaque, hopped in the truck and drove back to Phoenix. Like we made a huge ordeal out of it before, but sick. I'll be back to that race again for sure. Cool, man. Um, yeah, we got to call it quits regardless. Cause I got to get into another podcast. Um, but I did want to talk more about EDR. Wasn't, wasn't the whole purpose of this to be an EDR recap show? I don't know. I think we, when we ran into each other, we're like, dude, the FXR is sick. I haven't <laughs> seen you since last EDR. Yeah. And uh, uh, we were, you were like, you want to do this podcast? And I was like drunk. I was like, sure, let's just do it. And then Rick's <laughs> like, it would be fun to do an EDR recap while it's still fresh on your head. But my, I'll say just quickly, mine was super sick because we got a house further away. Yeah. It was only like a half mile away. We didn't really have any issues other than Rick's tire. Um, we spent the first night at Rubens and watching everyone get wild. Then we all went back to the house and kind of just started hanging out at the house with like our big group, like Jack and Timmy, uh, like all of the POS group was there. And then we were just going in between houses of just, or uh, in between like just sitting outside, inside. And then we spent a whole day at the beach and we were at the motorcycle show for a little bit. It was like just the calmest one that I've had the most fun at. You know, yeah. Cause last time I broke my wife's shoulder, and the time before that, it was like just the, my first one. So it was a hunt. We went a hundred percent wild. So like yeah. this one, I finally got figured out. So yeah, cool. It was nice. <laughs> nice EDR, man. Um, cool. They already know where to reach you. Yeah. See you guys next week. Yeah, for sure.